Hi friends, I'm Emily Lay and you're listening to the Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a quiet place where you can filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. Every week I invite you to slow down and join me to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. Guys, we are getting closer to the launch of my very first children's book. You might remember that it's called You're Always Enough and More Than I Hoped For. My hope is that this book will remind kids of all ages that they were made on purpose for a purpose. You won't always see eye to eye with everyone you meet. That's normal into every relationship, even with the partner who loves you so much. I bet you also know that nothing gets heated quite like a disagreement with your partner. Why is that, I wonder? Maybe we put too much pressure on our partners to be perfect, to be our everything. For a long time, our culture has been obsessed with the idea of finding your soulmate. You see it everywhere, in movies and music and everywhere in between. I mean, who wouldn't swoon if you were Renee Zellweger and Jerry Maguire and Tom Cruise had just told you, you complete me. This was pre-couch jumping Tom Cruise after all, so I bet you'd be all about it. We all want someone who completely understands us. We all want someone we can talk to easily because they just get us. We should fit together like puzzle pieces, like a lock and key. You shouldn't have to work so hard if you're with your soulmate, right? So what does it mean when you find yourself fighting with your soulmate? What does it mean when you disagree with the person who completes you about which school to put the kids in? Or how to use your savings? Or who you're going to spend Thanksgiving with? How does a conflict escalate from we just don't see eye to eye on this to questioning whether you know your partner at all or if you're spending your life with a stranger you only thought you knew and you're basically living a lifetime movie right now? All right, I'm slightly exaggerating, but I think some impossible standards have something to do with it. I think when it comes to our partners, things feel like they escalate a bit more quickly because the stakes are a bit higher. Who cares if you disagree with the stranger in the parking lot about who saw the open parking spot first? You're never going to see them again. Even if you disagree with your neighbor about where the property line is for mowing, it doesn't feel so bad. The problem isn't permanent. Grass grows back and people move. But so help you, if your partner doesn't put the toilet paper on the roll the right way, which is toilet paper going over the roll, not under, of course, it makes you question everything about your relationship over toilet paper. You care so much because you're spending your life with this person. That makes the stakes pretty high when it comes to conflict. This is your day-to-day life we're talking about. When you know a difficult conversation is going to come up, or when you find yourself in the heat of the moment, it can feel impossible to navigate your way out of conflict with everyone's limbs and feelings intact. You want to be respectful of the person you love. You want to let them know that you hear them, you love them, and you want to meet their needs. But here's the thing. Especially for us people pleasers, you want to do this while also making sure you're honoring your own needs and desires. So how do you do both? Is it even possible? Thankfully, I think it is. But like everything else worth doing in life, it takes some effort. In this case, it takes a lot of communication, probably more than you ever thought you needed when you first got together. It requires a lot of humility and attention to listening to what your partner needs It means getting quiet and attuning yourself to listen to what you need and mustering up the courage to express those needs to your partner. I am by no means at all a conflict (laughs) resolution expert. I am just a woman who's been married for 14 years and has learned a thing or two about how to navigate hard conversations with my husband. Therapies help too. Like any advice, some of this might work for you and some might not. Just take what you need here today. So here we go. Here are a few tips to help you navigate difficult conversations with your partner. Number one, take responsibility. It takes two to tango, as they say, but you and your partner hold responsibility for the success of your relationship and its challenges. Take a minute and think about how you might be contributing to the health of your relationship. When it comes to conflict, what do you bring to the table? How do you usually conduct yourself during a difficult conversation? Are you someone who tries to find a solution that works for both of you? Do you escalate the tension? Do you ever think it's okay to take a break and walk away? Or do you try to resolve everything in the moment, no matter what? 
If you feel like you need to change the way you interact with your partner during a difficult conversation, taking responsibility for how you behave in those conversations is the first step toward change. Recognizing your behavior or how you help or hurt these conversations will help you be more present in a difficult conversation the next time you have one. Number two, recognize your conflict pattern. This one is completely eye-opening. A few weeks ago, I was reading a book by a therapist named Elizabeth Earnshaw, and she was saying that couples tend to repeat the same patterns in their arguments, and she talked about a few patterns she's seen in her clients. See if you recognize yourself in any of the scenarios she describes. Pattern number one, find the bad guy. In this pattern, couples manage conflict by finding the bad guy whenever they're upset or disagree. Partners criticize each other, blame each other, and complain about the other. Things tend to escalate between them pretty quickly. Pattern number two, pursue and withdraw. This pattern happens when one person tries to pursue the issue while the other person feels uncomfortable and tries to withdraw from it. The pursuer wants to create connection between the two partners, while the withdrawer wants to protect themselves. Pattern number three, freeze and flee. In this pattern, both partners try to avoid conflict and difficult conversations, which means they're also living with a lot of uncertainty bubbling under the surface. They're having a lot of internal conversations with themselves instead of each other. There's a lot of feelings, but zero communication. You know that's not going to go anywhere good. Do any of these sound familiar to you? If so, can you think back to a conflict where this might have been true for you? Which role did you play? Here's the thing, knowledge is power. If you know how you fight and you're not a fan of it, then recognizing your conflict pattern will help you approach these conversations a little differently. I thought I knew my mom better than anyone. The other day we were chatting and she told me a story about herself I'd never heard before. And that got me wondering how many other stories don't I know? That's why I got my mom StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones connect through sharing stories and memories and preserves them for years to come. We actually got StoryWorth for my dad a few years ago, and truly, it's become a gift for our whole family. Every week, StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question of your choice, like, what's some of the best advice your mother gave you? Or, if you were to do it all over, what would you do differently? After one year, StoryWorth compiles all those questions and stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book the whole family can share for generations. There's so much I admire about my dad, and StoryWorth helped me and my kids see him in a deeper way. We got to see his hopes, his dreams, his funny stories from when he was a kid. We loved it so much that we decided it was time for Nana, my mom, to get on the StoryWorth train too. Honestly, my dad's StoryWorth book is one of those things that belongs in our family keepsakes box. It'll exist for generations, I know it. Give all the moms in your life a meaningful gift you'll both cherish forever, StoryWorth. Right now, for a limited time, you can save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash simplified. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash simplified to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash simplified. When the weather gets warmer, I feel like I want to freshen up my life. It happens every spring. I open the windows, get out the cleaning caddy, and tidy up for a clean slate. I also make sure to put more green on my plate. It makes me feel so much better to have fresh, clean food on the table every night. And now that's even easier than ever thanks to my very favorite meal kit, Green Chef. With fresh produce, premium proteins, and organic ingredients you can trust, Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. You guys, Green Chef saves me so much time. It makes meal planning decisions for me and takes care of the grocery shopping and meal prep. That's at least a couple hours I have back in my life. Plus, everything I've ever made from Green Chef is delicious. They have expert chefs who curate every recipe, so we get restaurant quality dishes at home. It's magic. The other day, we made chicken with a Parmesan sauce and Italian balsamic veggies. Oh my word, it was so good. I think our new lay family favorite is the chicken quesadillas with bell peppers and roasted corn salsa. That was a win all the way around the table. Freshen up your plate this spring and save time in the kitchen with Green Chef. Go to greenchef.com slash simplified130 and use code simplified130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. 
One more time, that's greenchef.com slash simplified130 and use code simplified130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Right now, I'm in the middle of a very busy season. That means it's even more important to put some time in my day to check in with myself. Otherwise, my anxiety monster is going to show up and make things harder than they have to be. Maybe you feel that way too sometimes. In a world that's telling you to do more, sleep less, and grind all the time, here's your reminder to take care of yourself. Do less and maybe try some therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and my listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash simplified. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash simplified. Number three, listen to your partner. This feels like a no-brainer, but man... Sometimes it's hard to do. I understand. If you feel like you're not being heard, it can feel so easy and warranted to shut yourself down until your needs are met. I'm really guilty of this, if we're being honest. (laughs) And if that's you, I get it. There's something that Elizabeth Earnshaw said that really resonates with me. Relationships thrive on responsiveness and die on dismissiveness. Let me say that one more time. Relationships thrive on responsiveness and die on dismissiveness. I wonder what your conflicts might look like if you tried to stay a bit more open and present in the moment, even if all you want to do is shut down. Think about it from your partner's perspective. If they had something difficult to talk to you about, how would you want them to feel when they approached you? Would you want them to feel like they're about to talk to someone who might bite their head off? Or would you want them to feel like they're going to talk to someone who's open and curious about what they have to say? I'm not asking you to sacrifice your own needs here at all. We'll get to that in a second. But I am asking you to think about how approachable you are in these difficult moments. After all, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. A weird metaphor, but true all the same. Number four, listen to yourself. This one's hard, especially for the people pleasers. But listen to me. Healthy relationships rely on both partners being attuned to and cared for. It's not up to the person who's naturally gifted at maintaining a relationship to make sure that it's healthy. It's up to both parties. As much as you love your partner, as much as they have your best interest at heart, they are not a mind reader. They don't always know what you need. They don't always know when you're mad or you're hurting. And they're not always going to ask. It's up to you to communicate what you need from them and when you need them to step it up for you, even when it's uncomfortable. Sometimes that means having to state what you need more than once, and I know that's frustrating, but it's your job to be your best advocate. And if you can't rely on yourself, that's a recipe for feeling constantly disappointed in yourself. And where do you go from there? How do you grow when you feel like you can't trust yourself? It's hard to advocate. I get it. Sometimes it doesn't feel natural to do that for yourself. And we could get into a whole other discussion about that on another episode. But this is something you need to do for you. It's just good for you. It's good for your relationship. Number five, know when to walk away and agree to disagree. Sometimes you're going to disagree. And even after a lot of talking, you may not see things the same way. That is also hard to accept sometimes. There's a time to dig in your heels and fight and a time to reach out a hand and compromise. If you're finding that you guys just aren't getting anywhere, it might be time to walk away for a bit and think about how you want to move forward. This is the part where I tell you it's okay to go to bed angry because people are the worst at navigating complex discussions when they are tired. This is your permission. No matter how you decide to move forward, remember to try and listen to your partner, but also listen to yourself. And the more quickly you talk about your conflict, the better it is for your relationship. As we close out this episode, I'd like to say a blessing for you as we leave this time together and get back into our days. May you remember that disagreements happen, even between people who love each other and that's okay. 
May you show up in difficult conversations in a way that honors your loved ones and also yourself. And above all, may you remember the things that unite you far more than the things that divide you. As always, I like to leave a little tip to help you put what we've talked about today into practice. So here's your task for this week. When you're in the middle of a problem with someone else, it can feel impossible to untangle yourself out of it. But sometimes, all you need is a shift in perspective. Grab a pencil and paper and write out the problem. What happened, how you feel about it, everything. Even if you never share what you wrote, sometimes just putting your thoughts on paper helps you see the situation a bit differently and diffuses some of the high key emotions surrounding the situation. Thank you for listening to the Simplified Podcast. I hope today's episode gave you a few tools and a lot more confidence to get through hard conversations with your partner. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can check out links and resources I mentioned here and shop the simplified brand of planners and products. And don't forget, you can pre-order my brand new children's book called You're Always Enough and More Than I Hoped For right now wherever you buy books. And if you'd like to listen to the Simplified Podcast ad-free and a little bit earlier in the week, then you should check out the premium version of our show on Apple Podcasts. Just search for the Simplified Podcast in the search bar and tap on the blue thumbnail image with the pink pineapple. You can't miss it. Okay, last thing, I love bringing you the show each week. If you're loving it as much as I do, would you do me a quick favor? Would you go over to your podcast provider and rate the show or even leave a review? This is a small thing that helps our show in big ways. It tells your podcast provider to put this show in the hands of more listeners who might enjoy some of these helpful tips and tricks. I really appreciate your help. And until next time, thank you so much for listening. Bye.